close to CFL record. New franchise record set in their last game. Quick completion out to the 15. That'll be enough for a first down as Tevin Jones gets involved early. By a significant margin. He's yeah. got 78 on the season. Here's Ford on the run. Out to his left. Trying to himself. And he'll be pushed out of bounds just outside the 20. So make something out of nothing there. So the only game that Trey Ford lost was against, in a, as a start, was against the Winnipeg Blue Bombers. Lots of teams have lost to the Winnipeg Blue Bombers this year. And when you add up Trey's, Trey Ford starts over the last three seasons here in Edmonton, you can add up all the other quarterbacks that have started over that period of time, and they don't have the same number of wins as Trey Ford. He has eight. All of them combined in the last three years have six. Looking to throw here a little sidearm action, and that'll be a first down, a little bit more as well, all the way out to about the 34-yard line, and Geno Lewis gets involved with his 70th catch of the season. You know, and I, I, I know that McLeod Bethel Thompson put up some big numbers. I mean, he's... Clouds well over almost 4,000 yards passing on the season. But again, was the starter for that 0-7 start. So, you know, at the end of the day, quarterbacks are, are measured really by wins and losses. And Trey Ford, 3-1 this year, only lost to, was to the Winnipeg Blue Bombers. And eight wins in the last three years, more than the rest combined. That one's batted down at the 40 as they were looking to get it into the hands of Jermenic Smith. Eugene Lewis on that last catch, by the way, went for 12 yards. He's now six yards shy of a thousand yard season. Nine touchdowns, as you mentioned, seven receiving touchdowns in his last seven games. Franchise record, had a rushing touchdown in that last game as well. He has been steady once again. As advertised. Team. All 17 <laughs> games this season. He's been there for four, throwing on second and long. Takes off on the run now. Makes one man miss, scrambling ahead. He's got the first down, and after he secures that, a slide for good measure. Well, when you when you want to widen to try and keep him in contain, you open up middle run lanes. Look at Arimelotti, how wide he is. Both defense fans. Now, just three-man pressure, so they've got a spy, but the spy doesn't pick him up. He makes the spy miss. Escape up the middle. It's Kenneth for Trey Ford, who won that game against Saskatchewan, or got the win as a starter. Three different running backs with over 500 yards. Ford in trouble again. Escapes down the field. Wide open. Thousand yard season for Gino. Fights off one tackle at the 50 and lunges ahead. Nice play by the young quarterback out on the run. Yeah, and you know, it's a, it's a play that. I'm just going to say it. It's a it's a play and a throw that not many guys can make at this level. I don't care what side of the border. It's hard to get outside and throw on the run like that. It pulls Eugene Lewis back to the football a little bit. He's running full speed and has to get that ball out there on that low curl with a guy right in his face. Tough throw to make. Should should go down as he as he gets the ball. Back. Second and five, far side this year. Never a bad idea to be that team that gets hot in the second half of the year. Look at Montreal last year, Toronto the year before. Yeah, no question, you know, and I, I, I think the Argos could make some noise in the playoffs. I really do. I, you know, you look at their, their defense, especially their front seven. Now, the one playing here tonight is going to be different, a little bit different than the one you see in the playoffs and possibly the Grey Cup if they make it that far because no win McManus and, you know, some of the starters out. But that defensive line can get after the quarterback. They lead the league in quarterback sacks with 47. They also lead the league against the run. Just 74.8. Here's some pressure. Ford gets it away. Wide open far side. Down to the 50. It's leaked. The race is on. Nobody's going to catch him. See you later to the 10. To the house. Javon Leak from Trey Ford. Touchdown, Edmonton.
Nice play call offensively. Great recognition by Trey Ford to Javon Leak out of the backfield, uncovered. No one's going to catch him from behind either. Ford drops it in over the shoulder for Leak. And he was not going to be caught. Trey Ford comes back into the game. Started the game. Got things going about midway through that second half. Made some of the Trey Ford style plays. Also threw nicely from the pocket and the big touchdown to Javon Leak. Right here. And right after that throw, he was pulled. Why do you think the strategy is not just give him the first half and then give Daggy the second half and instead alternate quarters? Second and 12, Argos will bring a little bit of pressure. Ford gets it away. And that'll be caught. Good tackle made over there. Chuan in the second half and Toronto number two. Ford over the middle, first down, out beyond the 45. As he goes back to Smith. Is Jarius Jackson or a new head coach going to commit to him as the guy? Second and eight, Ford escapes, takes off, looking for the first down, got it with a little bit more, spins his way out beyond the 35. And Trey Ford with his longest carry of the night. You know, and I, I will bring up the story again with number two, but there was some rumors early on about a meeting he had with the coaches. And I, I'll just say that a lot of people have the wrong impression of that meeting. And we'll just leave it at that. I'll tell you one thing, if I'm a, if I was ever got the chance to be part of putting together a roster for the flag football Canadian Olympic team. Trey Ford and Nathan Rourke. It's a pretty good starting lineup. Yeah, I think you'd be okay there. Imagine flag football with number two trying to get his flag. Yeah, good luck. <laughs> Second and nine. Dumps this one off. Far side of the field. It's Leak again. He's got a first down for Edmonton jostling with his former teammates on that far sideline. Don't you, don't you like his, his, first of all, his analysis of penalties, it was bang on. But secondly, how Javon Leak talked about, yeah, we got to come out and make those plays in the second half, you know, against my old team. Yeah. <laughs> he brought that up without being asked. That's, there he goes, this Witten McManus, the old teammate. I think Leak has shown well. He's at 199 yards of offense so far. Ford out to his right far side. And that one will be complete. Goes back to Dramatic Smith. Yeah, Leak 80 through the air with a touchdown, 119 yards on the ground as well in his new club here in Edmonton. First season with the team has been an excellent addition. Ford is now 10 of 14 for 151 and a touchdown. And win or lose will get, if, if they lose this game, Trey Ford will get the loss in his column even though he missed a whole quarter. And whistles before it goes. Time out. It's interesting because last year, heading into the offseason, there was some positive momentum with Ford at you, quarterback. You, you think? He was the most outstanding Canadian and most outstanding player nominee for the team. <laughs> and then they did replace him with McLeod Bethel Thompson in the offseason. So I don't think you can really read into pretty much anything you've seen so far with the handling of him. MBT you see on the sidelines. Yeah, and I and New I decision like, makers coming so yeah, and I and I like that decision when 
you know, Chris Jones and the staff decided to go out and sign McLeod Bethel Thompson. However, my first impression of that signing was bring in a veteran like McLeod Bethel Thompson to mentor and be the number two as you build an offense around this guy who probably saved your job last year because they were 0-9 to start the season with Taylor Cornelius. Last chance to make an impression on whoever will be calling the shots. On the run here is Ford. Down to the 40, to the 20, and a roar from the crowd as he takes it inside the 15. Well, the, the Argos loaded up the line of scrimmage, and not many quarterbacks can escape outside, especially when your defensive end is so wide. Look how wide the end is here, and Ford gets out and around it with all of the linebacking core and the full blitz he gets outside with that little play action and away he goes just staring down that play action run at the at off the edge and how about the acceleration in the open field Ford's at 65 yards as a team well over 200 against the defense that only allows sub 80. Ford down to the five. Tevin Jones has the first down. Second to goal. Argos bring heat. Ford throws it up. Touchdown streak in CFL history. That practice. That's <laughs> Back shoulder fade. Two throws in a row. Clearly, Trey Ford wanted to get Gino Lewis eight in eight games. Talent they have on both offense and defense. I mean, look at their backfield alone. Javon Leak and Justin Rankin. Trey Ford looking to throw here. Wide open. Out at the 30 and off to the races we go this time. Near side of the field. the 25 biggest play of his young CFL career. Trey Ford blows past 200 yards passing in the game. Well, there'll be times offensively when a guy will spring open, often a bust in the coverage, but it's up to the quarterback to find him. And that's what Trey Ford does there. He finds Smith. Smith wide open in the bust although protection so good that by the time he crossed the field he was wide open on the opposite side but Trey Ford found him Tevin Jones will slide in behind his quarterback now to the left to the end zone Ford thought about it now he's going to take off on the run gets to the far side down to the 20 First down for the Elks. You know, and if, if you are, whether it's here or, or another club in the league, if you are going to build an offense around Trey Ford, this will be part of it, a big part of it. His ability to scramble, his ability to run, the RPO type game, and then you just got to continue to work with the young Ford in making sure he gets out of bounds or hook slides. Because this is a big part, important part of his game. Almost impossible to track down, especially for big defensive linemen. Can Edmonton finish a drive here and take the lead? They'll hand it off to the 10. Down to the 5. Pushing to the end and he's in. Touchdown, Elks. Justin Rankin as his fifth rushing TD of the season. Edmonton leads 21-20. And will likely go for two to make it a three-point game. Take a look at the blocking up front. Left side, nice job opening up that hole with a pulling... Pulling guard coming through the, through the hole and... Good blocking up front for Justin Rankin. Rankin following Grohovic. All the way to the end zone. Can they make it a three-point game? They tried to go for two last time. Incomplete pass. 
Dylan Mitchell at the top of your screen. Gino Lewis, one-on-one -on -one at the bottom against Benji Franklin. Ford over the middle, back of the end zone, got him! Smith, who started the drive with a big catch of 71 yards, finishes the two points. And Edmonton leads 23-20 with 3.14 left. Yeah, this wasn't a short half-field drive. This was a long drive of 98 yards, but it only took four plays. Because Germanic Smith with the big run over 70 yards here, wide open against the busted coverage for the Argos. Trey Ford got involved getting his legs going and taking off through the B gap between the guard and the tackle for a big gain and a first down, a rank and run for the touchdown. Four plays, 98 yards, two minutes, and the Elks have the lead. Edmonton won two of their last five. Had things going well. They'd won five of six. 49 seconds, but you need the distance of the field. Got to be a deep shot or two in the cards here. Yeah, a couple of chunk plays. Doesn't necessarily have to be that, you know, 80, 90 yarder, but it, a couple of deep, deep plays. Now the Argo defensive backfield will play off a little bit. They're going to give them a little room underneath. Leak in it running back. Rankin will watch from the sideline. Two to the left, two to the right. Ford, far side of the field, down to the 50. Held on to by Eugene Lewis, and just like that, Edmonton is in business. And, and just like that, I, I mentioned that the Argos will play off a bit, and they really didn't. I mean, there's Geno Lewis at the wide out, and that's basically the alignment that DBs will play at any time in the game, not when they've got a lead and have to try to protect it. The one thing they can't do is give up the big play. 88 yards on the night for Geno. All the way up to the Toronto 40. Three on the defensive line. 42 seconds to work. Ford, will he take off himself? No! A shot down the field! Touchdown, Edmonton! Zach Mathis! The Elks go back on top with 34 seconds left. throws from Trey Ford to get it done. And yeah, they're out of the playoffs, and this is supposed to not mean anything, but you guarantee it does for a lot of players, including number two. And he goes to Mathis on that one. Gino Lewis on the play before. And in under a minute. Put the Elks back on top. It's just straight. Man to man, this is an inside receiver going deep, and I think the Argos' Mark Milton is going to trip here or stumble on his own player. Number 2-7 supposed to have the deep outside third, and he trips on his teammate. And Zach Mathis in the end zone. That's another piece they're excited about here in Edmonton. Big guy. Six foot seven, 203, 24 years old, has family on the East Coast. Three passes, 325 yards, a career high. For Trey Ford. And no matter you know what happens, Trey Ford has, has done this and now he's brought him back against the Argos playoff team. 